bringing the people behind our food to life. To me, organic farming is the beginning of learning once again what nature can do for us. Industrial farming was an attempt to make us believe there's nothing like a fertile soil. Soil is a container into which you put nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. There's nothing like a living seed. Seed is a manufactured commodity coming out of labs with a patent link to it. And this idea of empty soil and empty seed would continue to grow till there's a total collapse, just like in the banking system. We had artificial instruments of fictitious finance overriding the real economy till it all collapsed in Wall Street in September 2008. And everyone is still struggling to deal with that con the consequences of that crash. But the cons consequences of the crash of fictions in agriculture are even more serious because after all, finance is finance, it's not life. But seed is life, food is life, and soil is life. Organic farmers relink to the soil and learn the real origins of soil fertility in the millions of microbes that make for soil fertility. A good organic farmer must start looking for the right planting material, and that is the miracle of the seed. And I increasingly respect the organic movement which is why I said if I was an 18-year-old today, I would not go into physics. I would go into an organic farm. I am on an, you know, I build the organic movement in India. But as an 18-year-old today, I would choose to be an organic farmer because an organic farmer is the best scientist of today because they're having to actually understand how nature works in order to produce. Um, they are the best health specialists of today because they're giving us the food that gives us health. It's not hospitals that give us health. Hospitals increasingly are giving us disease. Um, an organic farmer is the best steward of the land and the best ecologist. And I increase, in, am increasingly feeling an organic farmer is the best peacemaker today because there is more violence, more death, more destruction, and more wars through a violent industrial agriculture system. And to shift away from that into an agriculture of peace is what organic farming is doing. Tell me what individuals can do. I think what individuals can do and individuals are doing is recognizing that the food we eat comes somewhere from s soil, comes somewhere from seed, comes somewhere from the loving efforts of a farmer. To re recognize those links and to make those connections is vital. I think the second very, very important thing is everyone is an eater. You eat two meals a day, three meals a day, your snack, your life, your way through life, whatever you do for food, you eat. And food is not just the commodity in Cargill's container ships. Food is the future of our blood, our cells, our bones. And I think we have to relate back to food as the future of our bodies. Therefore, every time we eat, we have to recognize the vitality of food, the sacredness of food, and link back through that into how food is grown. The only way we will really know how food is grown is if we have a neighbor who is an organic grower with whom we link. It means an effort, but that tiny bit of effort means security overall. A careless walking down a Walmart aisle where you don't know where the food is coming from, what's in it is going to condemn you to all kinds of health problems, disease problems, but most importantly, it's going to rob you of fundamental freedom. Before you know it, you won't be able to make the choice. You'll be able to eat 70 products of genetically modified soya, all of it coming from Monsanto seeds, all of it traded by one Cargill. And when you want something else, it won't be available to you. So. Every day's act of eating is an act of creating freedom. And doing it consciously, doing it with choice, has to be something we construct. As Gandhi said, we have to be the change we want to see. And then we have to drive the governments to shape the policies that make it easy and every day. Today's policies are going in the opposite direction. And therefore, ordinary people have to shape the world in today's time. But you are seeing hope. 
I see tremendous hope. First of all, I see hope in the seed. And that's why, for me, seed is my teacher. There's a wonderful poem that captured it in Palestine, said, you can drop bombs on my villages, you can destroy all my books, you can rob us of our culture, and you can create a landscape where no bird, no insect, nothing can hide. But I do not despair ever. I have hope because I save one seed that I will plant and grow again. And that power of the seed is the beginning of hope. But the seed is not just the biological material that gives us a tree or a crop. The seed is a metaphor of everything that grows, the seed of an idea, the seed of liberation, the seed of freedom, the seed of democracy. For us, seeds have become all of this. And, um, and I'm in a period of deep hope because I think, you know, when, when, the, when the destruction constraints and dictatorship is not too in intense, people do not sense it. It's a bit like that frog where you, you know, increase the temperatures little, little by little. And like frogs, we get burned to death. But when it's a huge leap in temperature, frogs jump out. The corporate greed is creating a huge leap in the temperature of control and people are now sensing it and that is why I have huge hope that human beings like the frog are going to jump out of this dictatorship and create new freedom.